All right, welcome back. Here we go. Um, next lesson's on simplifying radical expressions. We're going to start with some numerical ones. We'll throw in some X's and Y's and Z's. Um, pretty straightforward lesson, mainly just skill-based, nothing too fancy. Let me show you a problem. So this first little problem is just a warm-up. It's not actually, we're, we're going to see radicals in here, but I wanted to give you a, um, my take on how to break down numbers. And you'll see that a bunch of times in here today. This is something you've learned, you know, and you've been doing for years. But uh, I think I have the best way to do it. So let me show you. So this one says, uh, list all the prime factors of the number 120. Or in other words, let's break down this number 120 into its simplest pieces. And here's, and some of you probably made like a little tree and all that, and that's fine, but I think you're going to like this. Everybody seems to, to uh, think this is the easiest way to do this. So you take whatever number you need to break down. Go ahead and write the number. And then put a little, <coughs> a little uh, upside down division sign on it. And then here's the most important part. You're going to put a number here. You're going to put the small, always start with the smallest number that divide, that's a prime number, so like twos, threes, fives, sevens, etc. But always start with the, if two goes into it, then start with two. And keep doing two until you can't, and then see if three, and then go to five, and then go to seven, etc. Okay, so the smallest prime number, of course, is two. This number's even, so yes, two is going to go into it, so we put a two there. And we end up, we divide, we get 60, because 120 divided by 2 is 60. And then keep going with the same number until it runs out. So this is 2 again, and you end up with 30. And of course, 2 keeps going into it, right? And you get 15. And then it stops. Once this number is no longer an even number, it's an odd number, now, now go to the next possi possibility and see if it works. And that number's 3, right? So we make another upside down division, 3 and we end up with 5 and once this bottom number is a prime number 5 is a prime number then we're done 120 here's what makes my method nice is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 all you do is read this thing right here and so you could I mean for you could pretty much be done there or if you were trying to write it out real nice you'd write 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 and that does equal 120. This is a very powerful skill to have when we're breaking down radicals, as you're going to see right now. Here we go. All right, so the next problem is 450. But now it's what, what this one says is simplify the square root of 450. And even before we even do that, let me give you, let me just off to the side here, just remind you, like if I ask for the, what's the square root of 4, we all know it's 2. But the reason it's 2 is because inside of that radical would be the same number twice, 2 times 2. So if you can break down what's inside of the radical into its parts, like this, for every, since it's a square root, which is like having, you know, it has a little, basically a little 2 in here, right? Remember, we don't write the 2, but it's basically the square root means for every 2 of the same thing. Well, we have a pair of twos. Every pair comes out of the radical as one of those numbers because it takes two to create one. So the square root of four is two. We're going to do the same concept with 450. We're going to take the number 450 and we're going to figure out what its parts are. It's even, right? So we can put a two in there and we get uh, 225. Right, so I'm just, and you can get a calculator out for this, but you still want to do this method right here, but you can kind of use your calculator while you're doing it. Um, so 450 divided by 2 is 225. Obviously, 2 does not go into 225. And yes, I know that 3 does. I mean, I'm sorry, I know that I know you would look at this and say 5 does, but always go in order so that this thing is very organized when you're all done. If you remember the last problem, I had it like 2 times 2 all the, all the way down. So check for 3 first. A quick check, check on 3 is if the, if the digits add up, add up all these digits. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9. 
If 3 goes into the sum of these digits, then 3 will go into this number. Or, of course, you can have a calculator out and just type 225 divided by 3. When you do that, it does go evenly, so we're going to put a 3 here. And I believe you get 75, right? And then keep going with 3. If, if 3 works, keep using 3. And yes, 3 does divide into 75, and you get 25. And now 3 is done. There's 3 doesn't go into 25, so now you go to your next biggest prime number, which is 5. And then you're left with 5. And once this number is a prime number, you're done. And it's 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 5. So let's go back to the original problem. Instead of writing 450, we're going to write 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 5. Coming from this thing right here, goes in there. Now, remember... For every pair of something, it gets to escape the radical. So we have a pair of threes, and we have a pair of fives. The two that's in there has to stay in there. It can't, it can't escape the radical unless it has the right amount of things. In this case, it's square root, so it needs, a, it needs to have a pair. So the pair, the pairs come out. So we're going to be left with 3 and a 5, but the radical, the 2, has to stay inside the radical. So this came out as 1, this came out as 1, but that 2 had to stay in there because there was nothing to go with it. And then if you have more than one thing escaping, like in this case we had the 2, the 3, and the 5 escaping, when you're all done you just multiply those numbers together. And you get that. Um, you can get out a calculator right now if you want and check. If you just if you did a square root of 450 on your calculator, you're going to get a decimal. The decimal, I mean, just this is just for fun now. I mean, we're done. The idea of this problem was, I mean, this was it. You simplified the radical. But just to understand what's happening here, the square root of 450 on a calculator decimal is about 21.2, etc., and if you do the same thing, if you type this on a calculator right here, you will get exactly 20, you know, you'll get the exact same decimal equivalent. Um, not that big a deal. I just want, and we're not doing decimals on these. I just want you to realize that, yep, it works. This right here is equal to that. All right, here's another one. Um, exact, this one's nothing different. I just wanted to do a little bit extra practice with this method over here. 432, let's break it down. If it's an even number, then you're going to start with 2. You're always going to start with 2 until you can't. Okay, so 432 divided by 2 is 216. I'm actually got a calculator out while I'm doing this video, okay? So it's no big deal to you. You're using a calculator, but you're also showing what, what it is you're doing. Um, do keep going 2. That's an easy one. That's 108. It's still even, so I'm still going with 2. It's still even, still going with 2. But that's it. Now I'm done with 2. So now I try the next biggest prime number, which is 3. And yes, 3 does go into 27. You get 9. And then keep going with 3, and you end with a 3. So 432 is... 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. It's still a square root. If you look up here, remember this is just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a cube root in here soon too, but this is still square root. So we're looking for pairs. So we have a pair of 2s, we have another pair of 2s, and we have a pair of 3s. Each pair comes out as one single. So it's going to be 2 times 2 times 3 and then the only thing that wasn't allowed to come out is this lonely 3 right here. That 3 goes there. This pair of 3's escapes as 1 3. This pair of 2's escaped as a 2 and this pair of 2's escaped as a 2. If you have more than one thing escaping, then you multiply them all together. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. This is 12 square root of 3. We have simplified. We took 
this and we turned it into this. They are the same exact thing. Again, let's do it. All right, so this one is a cubed root. For a cubed root, we need sets of three things. We need the, the same thing three times. This is just like a little game we're playing here. So once again, we're going to do 1080, and we're going to break it down. I know it's a big number. I know it sounds crazy, but you're going to see this kind of stuff, and it isn't that bad. If it's even, divide by 2. 1080 divided by 2 is 540. Divide by 2, 270. Divided by 2, 135. No more 2. So now what I would do is I now add these digits together, and notice they add up to 9, so therefore go to 3. I know you're going to be tempted to divide by 5 right now, but start with 3 because it works, and that way this will be nice and organized all the way down. You're going to see all the 2s will be together, all the 3s will be together, any 5, 7, whatever's going up. So 3. If you do 3, you get 45. 3 still goes into that, and you get 15. 3 still goes into that, and then you're left with 5. So there was a 5 in there. It's just if you do it with my method here, notice everything. You get all your 2s together, all your 3s together, and then your lonely 5 at the end. Doing cube root. So we're looking for sets of 3. And we have a set of three twos. We have a set of three threes. For every set of three, it comes out as one. So the two comes out, the three comes out, the five's trapped. And then if there's anything, if there's more than one thing that came out, we multiply those together. And we can't forget this is a cubed root problem, so keep writing that little three along the way. That's it. Let me do one more example for you with variables in it. These were all numerical problems. Now we're going to put some X's and Y's and maybe some Z's. Let's see what we got here. We've got some X's, Y's, and Z's. I'm going to do this problem as slowly as can possibly be done here. I want you to really understand what's happening here. This is a fourth root. Now we can, there's a couple things you're learning here. We're going to learn about, we just cranked it up to the fourth root, which means that uh, we have to have four of the same thing in order to make them escape. And I put the variables in. I put some letters in here. Okay. Here's how I'm going to do this one to make it really obvious what's going on. First of all, I'm going to break down 32. So 32 is just a bunch of twos. You divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, two. Five twos. Now, I'm going to go ahead and write it all out. I'm going to just might. I wouldn't always do this, but I think this will help you understand what's happening here. It's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times x, 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 y, 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 z, z, z. Take a look at that. I'm just pausing here for a second so you understand that that's exactly what this is. This is just a, this right here is a shorter way of writing this big long list of things. Because x to the fifth power means x times x times x times x times x, y to the fourth, y, 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 z to the third, z, z, z. And 32, we broke down over here, it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I'm not saying you should do all this writing out every time, but man, it sure helps you understand it. Because watch what we're going to do now. Remember, this is a fourth root, so I'm circling sets of four. So I have four of those, I have four of those, I have four of those, and I don't have four Z's, so I can't circle any Z's. Anything that is a set of four gets to escape as one thing. So that four twos comes out as a two, the four X's come out as an X, the four Y's come out as a Y, and then whatever's left inside, fourth root still, don't forget that, whatever's left inside, which is going to be, there's a 2 here that couldn't come out, there's an X right here, and there's a Z, Z, Z. So we're going to write all that stuff still inside the radical. 2X, 
And now we're going to bring those z, instead of writing z, 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 we're just going to put it back to z to the third. And let's just end with it. We're going to do a lot more examples of this. This is just to get you started. But let's, um, let's end with this thought. How do you know you're done with these problems? Okay, That's the final question you always want to ask yourself. And the way you know you're done is you look inside here and just make sure there's no sets of four of anything left. Like this two is broken down. You can't do anything with that. There's only one x and there's only three z's. You're not done if there's anything inside of here that could somehow be broken up into four of something, of the same thing four times. And we don't have that here, so we know we're done. How do we know that? We also, remember, we, we got rid of all of them. That's what all this is. Easy lesson, um, just a building block for lots of other things. Um, you've probably done this before in Algebra 1, 2 class. I'm just uh, giving you my, my take on it. So, uh, hope this helps. Work hard. Be nice. See you soon.